The integral from 0 to pi on 2 of log sine x is a very classic result, and I'm going to tell you it right now, but if you want to try it yourself, go ahead. The answer is minus pi uh, log 2 on 2, and we are going to use this. So I was thinking, we know the integral from 0 to pi on 2, but how about the integral from 0 to pi on 4? And that is what this video is about. So let's get straight into it. So firstly, I should mention that sine x is obviously going to be less than 1 here, and we're taking the logarithm of that. So the answer will be negative. And to make it positive, we're just going to consider instead the integral of log cosec x. And so this will give a positive answer, so it'll just be nicer. So I kind of want to do a t equals tan x substitution, because that way the bounds would become 0 to 1, and also we'd remove the trig functions. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to multiply by 2 and divide by 2 like this. The reason is now we can take this 2 inside the log as an exponent, and now we have sine squared. And sine squared is tan squared over 1 plus tan squared. You can verify that for yourself. So this nicely sets up our substitution. And so we'll let t equal to tangent x. And obviously this means that x is inverse tan t, which is fine because x here is uh, between 0 and pi on 4, so it's clearly in the right range for it to be equal to inverse tan t. Uh, also, we should probably call this integral i. Okay, so the bottom bound will come 0, and the top bound will become tan pi on 4, which is 1. And then we're just going to change the tan squareds to t squareds. And then dx will be the derivative of inverse tan, which is 1 on 1 plus t squared, dt. Nice, so now we'll just put this log on the numerator, and we can split up the logarithm using log laws. So that would be log t squared minus log 1 plus t squared. And of course, we can take this 2 outside, giving us log t, but then multiplied by 2. So we're just going to split up the integral, pretty standard stuff. We'll get uh, log t over 1 plus t squared, and then we'll have plus half the integral of log 1 plus t squared over 1 plus t squared. Okay, now you're, you might be a bit annoyed with me, because... We're just going to quote the answer to this first integral. And the reason we can do that is because there's really no good way to show this. It's going to be equal to g. And what is g? g is Catalan's constant, which is approximately 0.9, uh, 0.91, I believe. And yeah, it's really weird. You can look this up and see what's the meaning of Catalan's constant. But, but I've seen this integral before, and I just know it's Catalan's constant, so I might as well quote it. So now... We're going to do a t equals tan x sub on this second integral, because you see we have 1 plus t squareds everywhere. It kind of makes sense. And then that means dx will be 1 on 1 plus t squared dt. And that's good because we actually have that exactly in the integrand. So we'll just replace that with dx later. But the bounds will become uh, tan inverse 0 to tan inverse 1. Okay. And then this will be a tan squared. And then 1 on 1 plus t squared dt, we can just replace that with dx. Nice. So we just have this logarithm here. And 1 plus tan squared is obviously sec squared. And that is cos x to the minus 2. And now we can take this minus 2 power outside the logarithm, giving us this. Okay. Now we've done a substitution, and the integral looks pretty similar to the original integral. So we have log cosec. That was what i was equal to. So just recall that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add i to itself. And that's a pretty common trick for uh, definite integrals, especially when it helps. So we have 2i on the left, and then we're going to just divide by 2 to give back i. So let's carry over these halves. And then, yeah. So now we can rearrange this. Uh, so, And now we can combine these two integrals into one integral giving us this, and using log laws, we have log cosec over cos. And that is just 1 on sine x cos x. Of course, we can take this minus sine out of the integrand, giving us log sine x cos x. And now this is a good chance to use the double angle. So sine x cos x is just half of sine 2x, pretty standard. And we can split up the logarithm again into log sine 2x minus log 2. And that would be plus um, half the integral from 0 to pi on 4 of log 2. Okay, now pi on 4, we can just take that down. So this integral would be pi on 4 log 2, and we have a half here, so it would actually be pi on 8 log 2. And now this 2x here is just pretty obvious. We're going to do a u substitution, letting u equal 2x. 
So our integral becomes the integral from 0 to pi on 2 now because the bounds have doubled and we have sine u in the logarithm and then half du. And of course this is just the perfect time to quote the integral of log sine which is just too cool not to quote and the answer is minus pi log 2 on 2. And there we go, we've actually removed all the integrals and now we're just going to simplify. So we have uh, log 2 here and we have two of these terms so we're going to just have pi on 4 log 2. And amazingly, the integral from 0 to pi on 4 of log, uh, yeah, log cosec x is g on 2 plus pi on 4 log 2. We have Catalan's constant, pi and log 2 all in one answer. And these are the two results of the video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.